okay we are learning the middle cranial fossa today so the boundaries the anterior boundary by the posterior border of lesser wing or sphenoid anterior clinoid process anterior border of sulcus chiasmaticus posteriorly by the superior border of petrous part of temporal bone posterior clinoid process and the dorsum cellae floor in its central portion by the body of sphenoid and lateral portion on each side by greater wing of sphenoid squamous part of temporal bone and anterior surface of petrous part of temporal bone now the features sulcus chiasmaticus it is transversely running groove just behind the jugum sphenoidal it is named after its relation with the optic chiasma which never comes in contact with it but lies posterior superior to the sulcus sulcus chiasmaticus leads laterally into optic canals the optic canal connects the middle cranial fossa with the orbit it is bounded by anterior and posterior roots of lesser wing and body of the sphenoid it transmits optic nerve ophthalmic artery and the meninges tuberculum cellae it forms an elevation just behind the sulcus chiasmaticus middle clinoid processes are the lateral prominent ends of the tuberculum cellae it receives attachment of anterior margin of diaphragm of cella cella tersica it is hollow behind the tuberculum cellae it is shaped like a turkish saddle and therefore named as cella tersica hypophyseal fossa is the deepest part in it it lodges the pituitary gland sphenoidal air sinus is present below the floor of the hypophyseal fossa dorsum cellae it is the back of the turkish saddle it is square plate bone behind the cella tersica superior angles of dorsum cellae project laterally into posterior clinoid processes diaphragm cellae is attached to the upper margin of dorsum cellae anterior end of attached margin of tentorium cerebelli is attached to the posterior clinoid processes carotid sulcus it is observed as a shallow groove on each side of the body of sphenoid it lodges the cavernous sinus enclosing the cavernous part of the internal carotid artery it extends posteriorly up to foramen lacerum where it is deepened the lateral margin of the carotid sulcus and its posterior end projects backwards into tongue shaped lingula superior orbital fissure it is a triangular fissure connecting the lateral portion of the middle cranial fossa with the orbit it is bounded above by the lesser wing below by the greater wing and middle medially by the body of sphenoid common annular tendon is attached to a small projection seam on the lower border of the fissure common annular tendon divides the fissure into lateral middle and medial parts now we'll see the foramens foramen rotundum it is present in the greater wing of sphenoid it is located just below and behind the medial end of superior orbital fissure it leads forwards into terego palatine fossa it transmits maxillary nerve remember here that this foramen is not visible in the norma basalis foramen oval it is located posterolateral to the foramen rotundum 
it leads inferiorly into infratemporal fossa it transmits mandibular nerve accessory meningeal artery lesser petrosal nerve and emissary vein foramen spinosum it is situated posterolateral to the foramen ovale it leads inferiorly into infratemporal fossa it transmits middle meningeal artery nervous spinosus and parietal trunk of middle meningeal vein foramen lacerum it is a foramen with irregular margin between sphenoid and apex of the petrous temporal bone carotid and pterygoid canal open into it internal carotid artery traverses its upper part with its sympathetic and venous plexus the anterior surface of the petrous temporal bone trigeminal impression is a depression for trigeminal ganglion adjacent to the apex a ridge limits the trigeminal impression posteriorly arcuate eminence is a prominent elevation it is produced by the superior semicircular canal its posterior sloping area lies over the lateral and posterior semicircular canals the tegment tympani is a thin plate of bone anterolateral to the arcuate eminence it forms a continuous sloping roof for the tympanic antrum for the tympanic cavity and for the canal for the tensor tympani the lateral margin of the tegment tympani is turned downwards it forms the lateral wall of the bony auditory tube its lower edge is seen in the squamo tympanic fissure and is divided into pterygo tympanic sorry petro tympanic and petro squamous fissures now the superior border of the petrous temporal bone it is grooved by the superior petrosal sinus margins of the groove provide attachment to tentorium cerebelli the lateral part of the fossa shows the markings for the middle meningeal vessels depressions produced by the gyri of the temporal lobe of the cerebral hemisphere